And now, if you would, let me introduce you to my world record leg trap. Hey, folks, do me a favor. Practice CPR, catch, photo, and release. The future of vision is truly in your hands. Hi everyone, Bob Nasekomer here for Grant Rods. You know, musky fishing's a tough deal. And the job's not done till she's in the bag. Well, how do you do that? It's pretty simple. You need big dog rods from Grant Rods. For your next rod, call them at 847-577-0848. Building custom rods since 1983. Big fish. Big fish! Is that over here? That is a 50 fish. <laughs> Folks, you're seeing it right now. My 100th just came in the net at Witch Bay Camp. Holy smokes, Rocky. He ate that thing. I've got a really great show for you tonight. We're going to be traveling to Osborne Bay on Eagle Lake, where we're going to be talking about, nope, not muskies. <laughs> not tonight. We're going to be talking about something totally different. Those bronzeback fish, the ones that, well, they pull like a freight train when you get onto a big one. That's the kind of thing we're looking for tonight. And then we're going to move on to Sabascong Bay. I had a, I had a uh, listener from last week's show get a hold of me, and he says, some friends of his uh, don't think Sabascong Bay is a good choice for early season muskies, and he asked me if I would divulge what I know about that system on tonight's show, and I said, absolutely. So I tell you what, we're going to have just a little bit of fun with all this tonight, and uh, I'm going to start it out here with, uh, with a flyby of Osborne Bay, which will get us set up, folks. I took some time to build a graphic for you people, a video representation of what we're talking about in Osborne Bay. We're going to be talking about smallmouth bass, okay? That said, you can catch smallmouth bass in a lot of places. Don't get me wrong. You can go to Green Bay and catch smallmouth bass. You can go to Mille Lacs Lake and catch smallmouth bass. The truth of the matter is, though, you're going to be fishing on top of other boats, and you're going to be fishing waters where somebody has definitely fished in front of you and will more than likely fish behind you. That's not the case when we get to Osborne Bay, Eagle Lake. What we're going to be doing up there is fishing unique water. We're going to be fishing countless islands and reefs. We're going to be fishing small rock outcroppings. We're going to be fishing some bulrush humps. We're going to be fishing so many different types of elements up there, it's hard to identify them all. On the phone with me right now is Randy Tyron. And Randy, you on with me? Yeah, hi Bob, how are you? I'm doing just fine. Randy is with Osborne Bay, Eagle Lake, uh, Century Lodge, and uh, he's part of a family up there that literally bends over backwards to make sure your trip is perfect. And I'm talking about Rich, Kay, Holly, Randy, and the entire family. But right now, Randy and I are going to talk just a little bit about some small moth. What do you say, Randy? Have some fun? Sure, absolutely. It's the time of year for it. You were just starting to say when we were talking off the air that, uh, that some people are starting to find some fish up there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, walleye season opens the third Saturday of May, and that's kind of when our season opens. So we're right when ice gets out, we're up here opening camp, and uh, right away we're on the water as quick as possible because we want to get into those early uh, spring walleye fishing, and then the smallies are start to snap right away as soon as the water warms up. Um, especially like tonight, we had a really nice warm day. Uh, this evening's going to be a great top water night. Um, last couple of days we've been catching them on. Um, jigs and uh, tube jigs and uh, jigs with grubs, things like that, a little slower um, slower type of style. Uh, but the top water poppers are really uh, my favorite, and they really start going for those as soon as uh, those rocks start to warm up and, and uh, they get aggressive for those. So, um, yeah, it's awesome. Just curious, what is the water tip right now? Uh, we're sitting about 52, 54. It's actually, we had a cold spell for a couple of days, so it kind of took a hit on the temperature, but... Uh, we're still pulling some nice fish out, but it's actually starting to warm up right now. So I uh, expect it to be 56 tomorrow and uh, you know, increasing, so it's like perfect prime time for it right now. So, 
Well, I remember the many, many times that I've been up there and uh, I've yet to go there and not succeeded catching just a ton of big smallmouth. And the water temperatures that we most often liked up there were that 53, 54, up to about 57, 58 because we got the pre-spawn fish. And those fish were chunky, heavy fish. Right, right. And then when these, these bull rushes start to poke their noses through the water, uh, it just just increases everything. And, and all these fish uh, really use that area. you got to have the rock, but when you have the rock weed combination, kind of kind of like for the big muskie, uh, they, they really, uh, really uh, kind of harbor themselves there, and they get real protective. And we throw those topwater poppers on there and just kind of work it over top of them. And they're, they're very, very aggressive. And I think you kind of hit on it. Uh, you, know, you can go to a lot of places and get smallmouth, but there's very few places you can go to and get the average size that we have. I mean, we, we average big fish, so if you're looking for a true trophy smallmouth fishery, and I say trophy with hesitation because uh, uh, once we found out what kind of smallmouth fishery we had, uh, we made it mandatory catch and release, so uh, it's a great place to come catch big smallmouth and put them back in the water to catch them next time or, or bring your kids up to and enjoy the next year or so. i got to tell you something. We... Uh we shot a show up there a few years back. It was the very first smallie show I shot. And uh, I had a six on, laid the rod down, and had another five and a half eat the, eat the jig and grub before I could even talk about the six that was in my hand. And we went on to, to literally just hammer these fish when we were there. And I had people come to me afterwards, after that show aired, and said, where in the world did you find those fish? I went up there. I tried to find those fish. I couldn't do it. There is a little... There is a little mystery to find in these fish, and there's a little skill and technique involved in it. And I've got some, I've got some video here, Randy, that we're that we can play if you want, and uh, we can take a listen to it, sure. and we can move on. Let's watch some of the video footage that uh, that we've shot up at uh, at Osborne Bay at Century Lodge. Um, it is it is pretty phenomenal stuff. Right there, I just watched it. Right there, it just come right up out of. <laughs> That's a five pound smallmouth right there. Let's get him. Oh, that's a nice fish. <laughs> and there's another one that came up. You get her? Oh no, I'm hung. Okay, well, hang I'm, tight. I'm loose. Yeah. Get her loose? Yeah. Look at this. Oh, nice fish. Bob. It's a five pound smallmouth right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything with him? I don't know. <laughs> Oh, this is over five. Oh, beautiful fish. Oh, that's over five. <laughs> <laughs> I got to right. get us off the reef, though. That is over five. Well, that's what we're here for right there. Oh, come on off the reef. Mm. Holy smokes, Rocky. That is a giant smallmouth, folks. Isn't that pretty? That is a giant, giant fish. And that's only the second fish we put in the boat. Folks, don't go anywhere. If you think this is the only big fish we got coming, I got another news for you. Dale Richardson and I are at Eagle Lake, and we're going to catch some giant smallmouth just like this. Yes! Beautiful fish, Bob. Isn't that nice? And we are going to catch some more fish for you before we're done here. Randy, I've got your lodge information up right now. Let's tell the people where you're located. Uh, by car and or by aircraft? Sure, sure. So uh, my family's place is only 100 miles into Canada. Um, you cross through at International Falls. Uh, two hours and 15 minutes later, you arrive at our private landing. Uh, it's all paved roads to the last nine miles, and they, we just graded uh, the road again. We always keep it nice and uh, good for those private boats that come in those last nine miles. Uh, we meet you at our private landing. Uh, it takes you about 15 minutes by boat out to our island. Uh, we've got 10 guest cabins right on the water's edge, a really beautiful area. Uh, we're the only lodge on the whole southeast end of Eagle Lake, which is really unique because back in the day, the way the roads were, uh, when you could buy land, the 502 road, the road that everybody takes up, wasn't there. So everybody used to have to go way around and through the top to the top of the lake, so that naturally got all the buildup. So uh, we're the only lodge on the whole southeast end. It's a very wind-protected, remote, sheltered end of the lake. Wonderful topwater fishing, not only for smallmouth, but excellent musky fishing. Um, Eagle Lake, through the whole system, is actually super strong. They did a lot of things in the late uh, 80s, early 90s that really ramped up the fishery. So um, all those things are coming into fruition, and we're having uh, phenomenal fishing for walleye, northern, 
smallmouth and musky. We get a lot of nice as perch as well. Most people don't come up for those, but uh, those are bonus. And, uh, yeah, so we, we've really encouraged the catch and release on the big fish. So we have a mandatory catch and release policy on the big fish, and that's produced and kept those big fish in the water. Uh, it's not hard to get shore launch. There's a lot of walleyes in there to have, take home, uh, and have a great time. And then we're getting a lot of big smallmouth like uh, Bob's hitting on today, uh, and this is a great time to come up. So we'd love to have you. It's a beautiful area. Yeah, and you're, let's say you're about 700 and change from Chicago, 640 and change from Des Moines. Duluth about 275, Green Bay just a shade over what 500 is it? No. Well, yeah, and uh, most people come from the Chicagoland area, but we get from all reaches uh, of the U.S. and we've had people come from over <laughs> Europe and everywhere. But uh, you know, Chicagoland area um, for what majority of your viewers, you just go 90 west to Claire, Wisconsin, 53 north takes you right to the border, and like I said, from there you're only 100 miles up, and it's uh, it's a real nice uh, trip. It's about 12 hours from. Uh, Chicago land, so about seven and a half hours from uh, seven, seven and a half hours from Minneapolis area. So I was trying to remember, Randy, <laughs> how old were you the first time you and I went fishing together? Well, um, we got the lodge when I was nine, and I, I, you know what? I think I was eleven or twelve. We shot that Kids and Muskie show, um, and I, I'd like to pull that video up at some point again to see that because it's been a, it's been a while. I was. I think I had to. I think you let me borrow your rain gear, and uh, I was I was definitely undersized for it. I looked like a little uh, clown in the with full of water and uh, drenched. But it was it was great, and we had a great show. I got a nice tiger at the end of the show, and I mean, that kind of started my musky uh, my musky uh, love for musky fishing, and uh, it's just perpetuated from there. So it's, it's been 28 years now that we've owned the lodge. The Lord's blessed us to have it that long, and I uh, hope to pass it on to my kids and my sister's uh, boy, and uh, uh, all the family loves it up here. So. We enjoy all the guests that come, too. Well, it sure did. Let's take a look some more of uh, Dale and I as we're fishing on uh, on absolutely beautiful Osborne Bay. And this little uh, super lightweight McDonough rig here. Very different thing to fish. It's a, You can never feel it on the bottom, yeah. unless it's just extremely gravelly. Yeah. you got to go extremely slow and... Uh, uh, but it, it, it's, it's just a, a line watching kind of bait. And uh, most of the time when I pick up something on it, it's because I see the line twitch just a little bit or a, mm -hmm. you don't even feel it. Um, there you go. There you go. Oh, there it is, Bob. There it is. Girl. Come here. Boy, to say to say this is a variety of fish, a variety of styles of catching them is an understatement. But that fish right there was on a on a tube. We've caught them here on topwater, tubes, crankbaits. It is what it is. See how, how lit up he got just with oh. my hands? Oh, yeah. And these fish are so chameleon-like. People don't realize that. If you, if you catch a, a really big smallmouth, it's really kind of an interesting deal. If you catch a super big smallmouth and you've got an adequate live well and you throw that fish in the live well for just a few minutes, you take it out of there. That fish will be so brilliantly lit, it's unbelievable. They will have bars on them like no tomorrow in that dark live well. Uh -huh. That fish, when it came out of the water, had almost no marks right. on it at all. And instantly in front of us, you could start to see them develop. But we are, we're, we're, we are literally going around structures, folks, time after time. You'll notice that we're in jackets now. Reason being is instead of being 85 degrees, it's 65 degrees. And although it hasn't really affected our water temperature dramatically, we had 69.2 as opposed to the 72 degree water we had, it is a change. And, and we are constantly just working around these slowly probing every crevice. You heard Dale talking about that french fry he was using. What he's using is a real small, here I'll show you the weight he's using. This is a weight, he's using a much smaller version of this, but it would look like a typical bullet weight. 
it's made by water gremlin the difference is is you'll be able to squeeze this thing together on your line and if you want to take it off and change to a different weight class you can do it instantly he's using it on a soft plastic called a french fry let's take a look at the one you're using very 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 small and a very subtle presentation whereas on the other hand i'm throwing just a regular old tube on a uh, on a jig you could use a lindy max gap jig i'm happy to be using on this particular case because I want a real long hook on this long tube I'm using a regular standard mushroom head that uh, Pete Davids makes for me but it's a uh, it's a nice it's a nice combination but you have to be prepared to work every crevice when these fish go down these fish are not on by any stretch of the imagination not at all it will take us right back into the wind and we'll work our way back up there. You'll be able to work that lure much, much more effectively going into the wind because it can slow the boat down. Yeah. And if you would, grab me another one of your green tubes, please. Okay. Oftentimes with soft plastics, you'll find yourself replacing your tubes quite often if you're on the bite. And you're not going to believe this, folks, for whatever it's worth, but I left the office with all my tubes sitting on the table. Not a good place for them. Uh, have you ever used those, you know, the football head jigs? Uh, yeah, roller jigs? Yeah, roller jigs in this kind of situation. No, you'd lock every one of yeah, them up. I was just wondering that, that with these the split rock and all the crevices, uh, I don't think that would do you much good, but I was curious if you'd used any in this situation. Nope, they, you'd lose every one of them. This one here staying stay in too. I got it. That roller would, would lock in there so soundly that, boy, it just destroyed that jig head. Yeah. Just, just that quick. Man, when you, come, you know. when you come here, bring yourself about a thousand jigs. Yeah. Bring her back. Oh, hold tight, hold tight. Hi everyone, Bob Mason over here. You know, I've got a place, a very, very special place in my heart. It's Osborne Bay. It's been excellent. Uh, Randy did a great job, the guiding service. Randy started taking us out when I was 10, and we've been catching big muskies ever since. The accommodations here are fantastic. Check out Century Lodge on Osborne Bay. Come on, bring her back. Hi everyone, Bob Mason over here for Grant Rods. You know, musky fishing's a tough deal, and the job's not done till she's in the bag. Well, how do you do that? It's pretty simple. You need big dog rods from Grant Rods. For your next rod, call them at 847-577-0848. Building custom rods since 1983. Randy, we got some people asking some information on the, on the internet here right now. They're asking primarily what the current water temperatures are. I know we touched on it, but why don't you tell us again what the water temps are? Well, I checked yesterday. It was low 50s. We had some sun today, so I'd say it's more of the 50, at least 52, probably 54. Uh, it's gonna, it doesn't take long to creep up here with, uh, you know, being that we're on the shallow in the lake, this end of the lake warms up the quickest. Uh, it gets the most vegetation uh, right away. So, I mean, we get the water temperature coming up quick. So it's good good, uh, good springtime fishing, so. Yeah, uh, there's another thing that you and I talked about uh, off the air, and that was the walleye population. What's happened to the walleyes and how they're migrating through sure. the system. We have people on the internet asking us about that as well. So let's touch on your walleye fishery just a little bit. Sure, so, so um, the, the lake's never been stronger. We've, got, we've had a lot since 89. And frankly, when we first got the lodge, walleye well, fishing was okay, but the numbers weren't incredible, and there weren't a ton of big fish. Um, they put a slot size in on the lake uh, in the early 90s. This was uh, Eagle Lake's really a monumental uh, uh, resource system to look at for other lakes that are struggling because um, they did that. They de decreased the amount of fish you can take home. Uh, then that, along with the uh, average mentality of the fishermen, is it to take a cooler full of home every time, you know, have some shore lunches, take a few fish home. Um, they also uh, took some of the uh, areas like Ingle Falls and, and Bunyan Falls and some of these areas that are, the lake flows from south to north, which is, we're, we're on the, the end of the lake. The, the lake uh, has a lot of strong tributaries area, so it's a big, strong, strong spawning ground area as well. But um, they kind of rearranged some of the rocks and, and 
uh, added some rocks in, and so it just really ramped up the natural uh, uh, environment for them to spawn. So all those things that happened in the early 90s have really just kind of perpetuated and ramped up. So, uh, you know, getting numbers of fish is very easy. Uh, we're getting a lot of good fish from the 16 to 18 to 20 inch range. Uh, we had conservatively nine, I'd say more like likely 12 fish at or above 29 inches. We had a 31 and a half last year. Uh, we had a 32 the year before that. So we have, you know, those are all release fish. All those fish that are over slot, we put back to, you know, keep those genes in the pool. Uh, no pun intended. So. <laughs> I suppose not. Uh, when the folks come into Osborne Bay, they're going to be coming in on your private access and they're going to be taking a trip. They'll be coming in right about here and they'll be taking a trip down the lake and they'll come through here, through the narrows, back around and they're going to come right down to your island. And that's the thing to remember yeah. is you guys are on that island. You're the only ones there. There's nobody else messing around with you. Right. Your entire crew is there. Your everything is right there. Nothing needed. Your fuel right. is there. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so it's really nice that way. I mean, when you come to Canada, you know, there's a lot of good fishing in the states to be had, and, and there's a lot of great places in Canada. But you know, a lot of a lot of times people talk about how the remoter places. But when you've got a lodge on either side of you, five to ten minutes away. And or you're on the road, or and you hear cars go by, or you hear a train go by every two hours. Uh, you know, those are the kinds of things that you kind of want to get away from. And um, you know, we meet you at our private landing. It's a beautiful launch. We got a lot of private boats there. We help you launch your boat. If you have, if you aren't using um, your boat, about half our guests use our camp boats, and they're very nice. Uh, we've got really nice 18 foot Crestliner Kodiaks with 50 horse uh, Yamaha's Bowmont trolling motors. Really nice uh, electronics with uh, the lake chip in it. And um, so, so we help you get uh, go either way on that. And uh, we've got seven docks surrounding the island, so you're not just confined to one long dock. And you might be that cabin in the back. Um, all the all the cabins are right on the water's edge. Um, you know, even you know some of these rods that for musky fishing are are just about long enough. If you if you stuck your pole out the, the the side of the cabin, you might be able to actually get some fishing just right off the cabin. And hey, uh, we hey. have plus 50 inch muskies come across the dock right each year. So. Well, my sons have caught fish off of both ends of your islands. So absolutely. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Some of the best spots are right within inside of camp, and that's another nice thing about it too. Is you're not going too far into Canada, and once you get to our lodge, which is only a 50 minute boat ride, you're not wasting your time trying to go. You know, everybody thinks let's get down the lake to where those fish are. Well, when you stay at our lodge, you actually already you've already chosen to be down the lake, so you're not making that long run every day to get on fish. You can go as far as you want to. But the reason why you come to our lodge is because you're you're where you want to be. So I mean, you can get your walleyes with inside of camp, uh, your smallmouth are with inside of camp. Uh, there's some beautiful areas you can go further south. It's, and we're the closest lodge to Nivens Bay, another beautiful area, it's very strong spawning ground area. Um, and the topwater fishing uh, for for all our species, like the muskie and the, and the smallies, you can't beat it. These fish aren't suspending; they're always in castable depths, and uh, it's just great. So it, it's a it's a it's a really easy place to catch numbers and big fish in all our species. So. I'm going to pull up a map here. We already know where the island is. Now, if we look to the east of the island, we find ourselves an entire rocky shoreline that's going all the way down that whole thing. I've caught tons of smallmouth up and down that shoreline. There's rubble rock in there. There's broken boulder rock in there. There's flat shield rock in there. Everything you need is right there. What do you think about that side? It's, it's, it's great. It's, it's like God took a spoon and stirred up all the things you want to fish and then took the spoon away and left it. And so there's a lot of wonderful structure, structure to fish. Um, you can fish pretty much any type of water you want to fish. It's all here. Um, you know, we've got that great rockweed combo. We've got a ton of islands. Um, it's, it's got that, and I keep touching on that because, um, you know, Eagle Lake's kind of known for being extremely rough at times and, you know, you get shut down and you have days where you, you know, you might have a day or two out of the week where you're not fishing. You don't do that at our lodge. You're actually fishing productively all week long because you're not going far and you don't have to deal with that big open water. So, I mean, you, you can't control the mother nature. So when you put yourself in an area that's wind protected and then also it has that nice thing in water. So if you've got, you know, four or five days of high skies, uh, you know, dealing with clear water can be a challenge. Uh, down on our end, it's not that way because they're, they're always wanting to feed because it's low light all the time. It's got that nice tea-colored thing. 
Exactly. Exactly. You hit on something very important there. It is a shield lake. It's connected to a very big body of water, but it fishes much smaller. It fishes safe. You can move around the system. You're not intimidated by it, so you get more enjoyment out of the process itself. Let's jump down to Nivens Bay real quick. Let's talk a little bit about Nivens Bay. Nivens Bay sure, is an sure. incredible fishery. Yeah, so, so um, uh, the lake is... is um Due to a large part by some areas that are sanctuaries, Nivens Bay is a closed sanctuary to the 1st of June. Um, they actually wanted to make from the bridge, which is kind of right by our landing, all the way down to the start of the lake, which is the very southernmost part, southern west part of Nivens Bay. They wanted to make that a closed sanctuary because this, this end of the lake feeds the whole system. And they could do that because our lodge was there. So they, they ended up uh, using the very part of the start of Nivens Bay. Well, I mean, that's just kind of re-emphasizing what I'm trying to tell you is how unique this, this end of the lake is because even the ministry says, hey, this, we got to protect it. This is this is really important for the whole system. So, um, you know, there's actually some neat spots down there. It, it is a little bit different. Um, the, in the summertime, it's a little more vegetated, but I, I tend to fish a little bit more rock subsequently. Um, there's a lot of areas that have current, um, some waterfalls there that are very beautiful. Um, the like, lake flows from south to north, so you can actually fish uh, some areas that have some deeper water, some of those bends going down towards Nivens are very pretty. Um, they've got a lot of depth to it, and, and that makes for great fall fishing. We've got a really unique fall resource, and um, what happens in the fall time, and it's kind of bouncing around a little bit, but what happens in the fall time is uh, they're not all over Osborne Bay like they are in the summertime. Yeah. And in the summertime, you can come up here and never been here before and have a great, great time just going out everywhere. Fall time, there's less spots, and you know, we've got a really detailed map orientation. We talked about current conditions, get you on fish right away. And in the fall, they all clump up. So it's a really nice time because there's less spots to fish, but they're all very, very concentrated. And I'll be fishing over 24 foot of water, 26 foot of water, which is kind of, kind of deep for us. And sometimes the graph will read four foot. And what's happening is the bait fish is so thick, it can't read through that layer of fit, the bait fish. And so it bounces from 22, 24 foot to four foot. And it's, it's really unique. And that really is great areas for fishing. So. Yeah, and Nivens, Nivens, unlike Osborne, Osborne is like a coffee water. It's got coffee and cream. When you get down to Nivens, it's tannic acid. So you have two different totally types of water. Your your conditions change dramatically between the two right. systems. Now, what we don't have here is we don't have that, like, chocolate milk, you know, environment where you're like, I don't know if the fish can see it, you know. I mean, if it's the windiest of windiest of days and it's two, three days blowing, I might see that in the back recesses of one of the corners of the base, but I don't tend to have that uh, where I feel like, man, I don't think the fish are seeing it. It's just nice because it's less light penetration. I, fish tend to feed more in low light. Um, and when you're moving, you know, especially going back to some musky fishing, when you're moving these fish, they don't spook off like they do in clear water. So you really get to engage them on the figure eight. And it's not like you just have to wait till the evening bite for the top water. We're actually throwing that all day long because these fish are still shallow and, and all those things that make Osborne and Nivens Bay are very special. So. You, know, you know, Randy, you, you, you've been stung. You've been stung. We're talking about smallmouth, and here you go back to muskies again and again. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> that, well, things turn to bait sometimes. I can't lie to you where my heart is, but, uh, you know, when you're smallmouth fishing in the springtime, uh, they're like muskies. I mean, they're very aggressive. They, they uh, you know, they, they attack the lure. Uh, you, you put it in front of them, and they just can't handle it. I mean, they're very instinctual, and, and it, it's a blast. It, it, actually, I, I do consider them, and, and when you hook into one, I mean, it's like it, it's like no other fish, really. I mean, you, you're like, whoa, you almost feel like you have a muskie, and then this small small, small skyrockets out of, out of the water, and it's the size of them that really is the, the reason to come to our lodge. I mean, we've got big smallmouths, so they're very, they're, they're, it's just a unique resource to have really good numbers and big fish, so. Yeah, indeed. Hey, let's take just a second and tell the people how they can interact with us on today's show. You can find us on Facebook at Fish and Sticks TV. Uh, you can private message us on Facebook, and that is a private message. That's what I pick up on. And we're on the phone, so guess what? You're not going to be able to call in tonight. But if you pre-register your phone, you will be able to call in going into the future. Randy, I'm going to dump us in real quick to the last segment that we've got. I want to show this, but before we go there, I want people to know one thing. I'm going to show a piece of information here 
that it's going to show a device that we carried for years and it is no longer available. Although I carry one and I still carry one, it is one of the most unique tools there is. But don't rush out and try to find it because you're simply not going to do it. It just doesn't exist anymore in the marketplace. It's one of those deals. But uh, with that being said, let's watch the last segment. We'll come back, we'll touch base, clean up on this, and uh, I'll let you get back to dinner. So let's see what we got to say here at the end. You know what these, uh, you know what these bass are hitting out here? Watch these mayflies. See them? Yeah. See, there's one out. See him working the outside yeah. over there. Mm -hmm. Something just blew up way down there. Molly, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a nice fish. Oh, yes. What a way to close it, huh? Oh, yes. Nice, quiet night. A little warming trend. A little topwater action. It ain't a monster, but it is what it is. The last fish of the trip, right here. Come here, girl. Maybe I should say uh, thanks to Rich and Kay and everybody back at the lodge while we're fighting this thing. Come here, baby. Come on. Come on. And I know that they would really welcome you folks to come on up here and try a little bit of this smallmouth action. Whether it's topwater, jigs, crankbaits, you name it. Dale and I have had the experience of being able to catch these fish right here at Century Lodge on Osborne Bay. Look at this girl. Come on. What a way to do it, huh? Boy, oh boy. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I'm serious, folks. When I say, hey, it don't get any better than this. It ain't the biggest girl we caught, but we did show you some big fish, and hopefully we showed you some new techniques, or at least introduced you a little bit of the of the variety of fishing that has to look at this fish look at this fish colorize itself right now she's changing colors literally in my hands right now see how barred she's gotten that's because she's out of her element her lights changing her eyes are sensing that and changing her body i'm going to get her back remember practice cpr catch fun release the future fishing is in your hands and do it right here at century lodge in osborne bay dale's having a good time easily the best small mouth experience in my life folks with that being said you stay tuned. We'll see you next week with more Simply Fishing. Dale was with me next week. Who's going to be with me next week? You tune in and find out. Hey, I got to say, Randy, without a question, some of my most memorable times have been up on Osborne Bay. With that being said, Randy, let's built out a couple of phone numbers, a little bit of contact information. I have the website up for you. So, uh, hey, sure. before, before we do that, though, before we do that, let's talk just a second about your rates. Because you guys sure. have, so if you, uh, yeah, we have housekeeping uh, available, uh, and we also have American plan. Most people like the American plan with us because uh, for us it's actually very convenient. Uh, food's killer. My mom's an excellent cook. Uh, my wife's also fishing as well, and she's awesome. Uh, I've gained like twenty pounds since I married her. Uh, and uh, but anyway, so if you bring up your own boat and do the American plan, including all your meals, six nights, six days, private cabin, uh, right on the water, it has detailed map orientation. Um, Launching, docking, charging, that's all included. Uh, it starts around a thousand bucks. And then if you want our boat and motor uh, and all the gasoline, all your meals, it's uh, starting around twelve ninety nine. dollars special. Uh, if you want to get a guide every day, uh, you know, you're going to get to $1,500 to $1,600. Um, and that includes five full days of guide service, so that's a good deal as well. If you want to just kind of do your own cooking and come in when you like to it and eat on your own, that sort of thing, uh, we do offer that as well. 
well. Uh, it's one fifteen a night per person, um, and we do have uh, uh, rates for children. Um, it's fifty percent off if you're sixteen to twelve, twelve and unders. Um, uh, actually, sixteen to twelve is fifty thirty percent off, and twelve to uh, six is thirty percent uh, fifty percent off, and six and under is free. So um, it's a really reasonable price for what you're getting. Uh, plus, if you bring your own boat, you're not burning lots of gas, and you know gas isn't cheap anymore. So uh, you really want to go to a place where you're not wasting time driving down late to get on fish. So you also have. Uh I, I know you don't talk about it much, but you also have a very unique situation. You have a fly-in too. Yeah, we have a fly-in outpost. Um, you know, one of the reasons why Century Lodge is, you know, we've been blessed to have a lodge for 28 years is, in a lot of ways, we're remote like a fly-in right here, being that we're the only lodge on that end of the lake. Um, but you can drive to us. Um, our fly-in outpost is uh, really nice because it's got a lot of big pike and lake trout. And it's 22 air miles south of us. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of our favorite places to go to. It's one of the places that, you know, when my sister and I were younger and uh, before we were married with kids, we'd, we'd go up there as a family, take the week off, and just kind of uh, enjoy uh, being unplugged from everything. And, um, yeah, it's a, it's a phenomenal resource. Uh, we're the only cabin on that lake. It's, it's also on an island. Uh, it's beautiful. And um, so that's something else you can do. You can also add a day trip, fly in, uh, you know, We've got some awesome smallmouth lakes that people have been taking advantage of too to get into a lot of numbers. And there's other things you can do. I mean, but uh, I mean, just coming to Century, you get a real mixed bag of fish. You've got a lot of big fish potential. Um, and one thing I didn't really hit on is we're a really family run environment, and it's a nice place for kids because you don't have to just be looking, you know, saying, okay, are we going to go for that big muskie today? And we'll be trolling around and. And, uh, you know, you guys are going to go, kids, it's going to be a tough day. You're going to be catching a lot of fish along the way. So, you know, you can have the kids jigging for walleyes where you're chucking musky baits, or you can be smallmouth fishing and hitting walleyes where you're smallmouth fishing. So all these fish are in the same water column. So it's re it's real diverse. You're, you're multi-species fishing all the time, whether you want to or not. And, and that's something to be aware of. You can come up there prepared to multi-fish. You can come up there with some musky equipment, you can come up there with some pike equipment, come up there with some smallmouth, some walleye, and spend different periods of the day or different periods of your trip enjoying multiple species. That's really key. Yeah, it's nice to mix it up. I mean, we get a ton of people that are just diehard musky anglers and wouldn't dare take a minute to have a shore lunch because they, they're so focused on enjoying the awesome musky fishing we have. And then we, you know, we've got a lot of guests that the shore lunch is a big part of it. And uh, so we can do both. And, you know, it's nice because you don't have to be restricted to one species or the other uh, during a certain time of day. Uh, you know, you can kind of mix it up and then keep it active for the kids. And uh, we also have some, uh, some of the things that we really enjoy. Um, we've got a day portage trip to a uh, really remote musky only lake and all you'll see and catch in that in that lake um, is muskies and the best day I've, and you might want to sit down for this one the best day I've had in that lake in one day we've caught 44 muskies in one day now they're not the trophy <laughs> musky that we yeah right I mean that's that's crazy right uh, they're not the trophy muskies we have right with inside a camp so you bring like a heavy duty bass rod with you know of course braided line uh, you just crank your bucktails as fast as you can. You just have to just have a ball. So it's a great place for fathers and sons and daughters and alike to come up and, uh, you know, learn their figure eights. And you'll be having times where you're figure eighting two muskies, and the person in the front actually got one on. It's, a, it's just a freaky lake, and we go by Argo by that one. Uh, so that also really adds to it. It's a really fun day trip. Uh, it's an amphibious eight-wheel vehicle. So it's a, just a real blast. that We always try to uh, incorporate those types of things in for families. So. Well, let's get some people to go to that Century Lodge Osborne Bay website. Get those, get a hold of Randy, Rich, K. Go up there and have a little fun. Randy, I want to thank you for being on the show tonight. I expect and I hope that down the road we'll do this again. Uh, this is not our thank first you. rodeo. You and I know one another for a long time, and I really enjoy your company. Well, I appreciate your friendship, and for myself and my, my beautiful wife and kids, uh, my sister Holly and her beautiful family, and of course my mom and dad, Rich and Kay, we've We'd all love to have you guys come up, check us out. We've got a really nice Facebook page as well. as lots of video on there. Just look up Century Lodge Eagle Lake, and uh, you can kind of pan through that. And if you have any more questions, just feel free to email or call us, and we'd love to have you up. So thank you so much for the time, Bob. Good enough. Thank you. We'll see you up there.